and welcome to my channel, Haley and Marie Vintage. Today we are of course doing a sewing project. It's been a little bit since we've been back in the 40s and that is where we're headed. I'm going to be using this pattern, which is Butterick 4771. It has this beautiful ruched like waist, ton of buttons. Apparently I need 16 whole buttons, which we love, and it is Oh, sorry, I'm apparently sleepy. The description for this is a Mrs. One Piece dress with a shirt midriff. It's a soft dress. It's fittest, fitted bodice, has a casual collar, plunging neck, shirt midriff across the front, chic button details, push up sleeves, short sleeves with shoulder pads to give smooth shoulders, seven gore skirt to a swing in a flared silhouette. So that is what we're doing today. I'm pretty excited about this actually. I've had this pattern on my list for quite a while. I think. Think. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the short sleeve version. I might even go no sleeve because sometimes I just prefer to wear a sweater anyway. But the long sleeves are designed for them to do the weird sharing up the side, which I absolutely hate. So we'll stick with the short sleeve because of that. And we're going a little demure, which is funny because obviously I just came off this project, which is like holographic Barbie pink. And instead, we're gonna go to black. This is a fabric I picked up for really cheap, I believe $3.25 total because I picked this up at a fabric sale that was selling by the yard and it's this very beautiful like dark tulip fabric that I really like and I'm pretty excited to use. So that is the plan for this project. I don't anticipate this being too challenging other than this size is now two sizes too small so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of size adjustment but it should be pretty easy and then on top of that I will probably need to adjust the sleeve. Let's see does it have a princess seam? Of course it doesn't. Uh, just a front and a back bodice. That's totally fine, um, but it should be pretty easy. I should really just be able to do it by adding it into the sides. The sleeve might be more of a chore that I have to figure out, but yeah, no, I just, I anticipate this being a pretty straightforward and easy project. That's just like a good return to, I haven't done just like a basic dress from the forties in a while. So I thought that would be fun to do on this channel again, since it's been a bit. So with that, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into me cutting out this fabric. So of course, first I am starting off by cutting out all of my fabric. You'll see the sleeve piece that I'm working with here. I actually traced the sleeve piece and made it wider because I really hate tight things on my arms lately. So I added an extra inch and a half in the sleeve so I wouldn't have to deal with tight sleeves. So that is why you see a different color pattern piece. Everything else I am using according to like exactly as they're stated, except for I'm adding an extra bit of room on the waist. I'm trying to get an extra two inches there. I will say this is one of the like crunchiest and most shattered patterns I've ever worked with. If I had had tracing paper, there's a couple pieces that I would have traced, but my tracing paper is unfortunately at my parents' house and I need to bring it back this next time I'm over there. I definitely would like to trace this pattern because it is not easy to work with because the paper just shatters. Other than all those changes I'm tracking in my brain, this is basically business as usual with me cutting this fabric. And this is also the time I will remind you that I do have a Ko-Fi where you can go over and buy me a coffee if you so desire to support this channel. Of course, it is not necessary, but it always helps out as I put a lot of time, love, and labor into this channel. So first, I'm starting by marking and pinning all my darts in the back. I don't know what else to say. This dress is semi-complex on the front darts. Like there's a special trick I have to figure out. So I just wanted to focus on the back darts to start to give myself an easy win this morning. After wrapping those up, I read the instructions about 16 times to try to understand what they were asking for the front dart because basically the front dart is made by making a channel to put some cording through that will then do the gathers there. So I was just trying to figure out what that even meant. In my attempt to follow the instructions, my first step is I am putting in a pretty hard crease on where eventually I'm going to stitch the channel slash the like dart that's going to be on top of this garment will be. Hopefully this all makes sense. This was a very, very confusing step. And then after that, I am matching that big crease I made with all the marks of the other side of the dart. 
and then I am pinning this down flat from the front. This is a very unusual dart in the fact that I will be stitching it from the top. And then it says to stitch a quarter inch channel top stitching, which you can see me doing here. On one of the darts, I did stitch the channel initially too small. So that required some seam picking to fix that. But luckily with this rayon, the lines didn't stay prominent. And then from there, I am running some thread. This is just like a random cordage twine thing I had in a drawer through the channel using a big embroidery needle. And then they tell you to tack that bit of thread to the top of the like dart opening so that way it can't get pulled out. So I'm doing this and then I will trim that tail that's sticking out on the top. Once that's done, it tells me to gather the front bits to be about six inches long so I am doing that. I did it on this piece and then I realized I'm going to be working with these pieces quite a bit before this gathering matters so I didn't actually do this with the other piece. I'll wait to do that when we get to the point where I need to like officially attach things. The bit of gathering that I am taking seriously is the gathering of where this is going to attach to the side back. I am gathering this up to fit the side back and then pinning it before sewing those. Because I just couldn't make myself track French seams on top of all the other measurement changes I was tracking for this pattern, I am just going to use a rayon seam binding. I feel like that fits well because this is a rayon fabric and I am just basically sewing it down one side and then folding it over and sewing it down the other to completely enclose the seams. I will also now be doing the same thing to the shoulder seams. It doesn't have me work on the sleeves later until the skirt and the bodice are joined, but I don't want to have to move the whole dress around to work on the sleeves, so I'm starting them now. First, putting in the gathering stitches between the notches, pinning the side seams together on the sleeves, and then ironing those seams so they'll press one way. I will note with rayon, I try as much as possible to only press it from the back because it's really easy for rayon to get kind of melty marks. And now I am easing the sleeve into the sleeve hole. I always like to do this sitting at my machine. And now I'm focusing on the collar. Again, the collar is something they don't have you put in until later, but I feel like with the fact I'm interfacing it, this will give extra sturdiness to the neckline, which will help it not warp or stretch or do anything weird. Once these are interfaced, I am pinning them right sides together. And then after sewing it, I am clipping all those curves and corners and all that good stuff. Before then fully turning it and pressing it, I do want to note that I added a back zipper to this dress, which is what I always do. It just really helps with like mobility stuff. So since I'm doing that, I did have to split the collar in two as well. I'm perfectly fine with that, but I know some people don't like having like the split collar in the back, but it doesn't bother me because it's the back and I don't look at it. And today I find myself pleasantly surprised to be running ahead of time. Spooky is clearly desperate for attention. She loves to sit on top of my machine and she was trying to headbutt me in this case. Uh, but she gets plenty of love. Don't worry, she is not a sad cat. She just wants more attention than sometimes I can give. Just sewing all those skirt seams together. Again, I'll sew those with the rayon seam binding. And yeah, I was excited. This was further than I planned to get today, so I was pleased. Good morning, it is the next day. I actually made a lot more progress on this piece than I expected, which was pretty neat because I kind of was like, oh, I'll just get the bodice done. But I have the bodice and most of the skirt done. So my dress is essentially in four pieces, or I guess six, because I still need to add one more panel for the skirt. So I have two halves of a skirt, one half here. There's another half in this pile. I guess this, this piece is the other half. They're the exact same thing. And then we have two halves of a bodice. So we have one half and two half. This was less complex than I expected. I've gotten a lot faster. I don't know if it's the gowns or because I haven't gone into any handwork yet for this. I was feeling a little worried about this actually fitting until I did the skirt. The skirt I feel much more optimistic with and sometimes that was what it takes. Huh. I'm trying to figure out if I just watched someone steal an Amazon package out my window, but not my problem. I'm more optimistic than I was before on this. I am still doing the zipper up the back even though this is technically a front closure dress. I don't need to do 16 buttons every time I get in and out of this dress. That's a hard pass. But uh, yeah, we're we're doing good shape. We're in good time wise. I'm on track to finish this on time. Maybe if I'm lucky get the reveal done today. So today I basically just have to finish the dress. 
just, you know. And the other things though on my plate today are kind of a lot. I also need to film two other videos today because we are coming up on the holiday season where I'm in and out of town a little bit more and I'm just really busy so I'm trying to pre-film as much as possible. So today is slated to be a very, very, very busy day for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hop to it. It is almost 10.15 in the morning. I'm going to begin, I guess, doing things. I got really behind on The Bachelor, Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise, so I wrapped those up. Hi, Spooky! The Golden Bachelor's Ladies Tell All made me cry, which I I was like crying and sewing yesterday. It's fine. Today, I'm just gonna listen to um, all my Bachelor recap podcasts that I like now that I'm all caught up. So that is what's on the uh, entertainment front today. And now I'm gonna hop into it. I started this morning by just finishing that, attaching that last panel of skirt to each side of the panels. After that, it sounds strange, but I am literally going to attach each bodice and waist piece together separately because there is going to be basically openings across the waistline in both the front and the back. And now I'm doing my next round of interfacing, which is into the facings that are going to be around the neckline and the front button thingies. Now that I have the facing pieces all set and ready to go, I am prepping the bottom of the skirt that will actually be sewn together so that way I can do the facing properly. For the facing, I am adding in my button looping and I have already gone around and folded it over to get a clean edge as well as sewn the little bottom bits together. And here I am actually sewing that skirt rayon seam binding on, so all my seams are clean and we are ready to go. It is now time to attach the facing. The facing only goes up through like the mid-back collar and then it tells you to basically tuck the rest into the collars themselves, but I decided to instead real quick just pin on some random fabric to have facings in the back as well so I could attach my tag, but also it just feels weird to have a front facing that then doesn't have a back facing and I was kind of not a fan of that, so I quickly rigged some facings. And then I am just sewing that in. I am making sure that the button loop I am sewing through the same stitching that I stitched in the button loops so that way I can be sure everything is even and looking the way I would like it to. And here I am of course under stitching my seams for the facings because I would like them all to fold in nicely and not show any of the facing even though obviously it's the same fabric so it would be fine but it's ideal that it doesn't show at all so I'm under stitching the full like straight edge of the front and then I'm also going to under stitch around where like the collar and the neckline is so that way that all lays correctly as well and I'm quickly popping my tag into the facing I'm trying to be really good about remembering to put my tag on things and then after pressing everything, I am now marking where my buttons will go by just sticking my pencil in the middle of the button loops here. But before I sew those buttons, I need to first make, there's like a little guard they have you make that makes it so it's not see-through where those buttons are, which I think is great because any of you who've ever used a clothing item, like especially a modern one, with these, there's usually a gap all the way down. After I got this stitched, I am then turning it inside out and I'm glad I've done none of the facing tacking because here I am pinning this in like attached to just the facing itself. I believe they have you doing like a full on top stitch in the instructions but that's gonna then make all the gathering that's there look really weird. So I am instead keeping this firmly sewn just to the facing part. And now I am prepping the zipper. The zipper is the only spot that will have pinking. I don't prefer a pinking finish for rayon overall, but it will be okay with the way a zipper is sewn and constructed. I am pressing the fabric here to prep for the zipper to make sure everything's nice and flat. And then cutting the zipper opening open before then sewing in my zipper. I'm quite pleased with the zipper. Everything ended up super even, which we love. And I do still feel like a zipper was a good addition to this dress. And now it's time for me to start wrapping up the hand sewing of this dress. So the first thing here I'm going to be doing is sewing or tacking down most of the facings. After doing that, I could try it on and this dress is about 5 inches too long. So I am going to cut off quite a bit off the bottom so that way my hem isn't super thick. So I first use my gauge to measure it and then now I am going to cut it. 
And then I am gathering, pulling those gathering stitches to ease the hem in. I always like to have a little extra hem in case one day I decide I need it, I guess. I have no real good reason for this. But for the most part, the gathering technique does a good job of not leaving any weird creases in the hem of a rounded skirt. During this time, I am also prepping the hem of the sleeve. This I'm just bringing up by like a half inch. I eyeballed this, not gonna lie, but I feel like my eyeballing has gotten pretty good with how long I've been sewing now. And now I'm gonna sit down and watch TV and do all this hemming that I have prepped for myself. Sleeve hemming is always enjoyable after skirt hemming because it feels like it goes by really fast because it's such a small area. And then my last step is to sew on these buttons. I picked up these buttons at an antique store and I think they actually might be antique buttons, but I'm not sure. But I think these were the perfect addition to this dress and I am excited to show you the reveal. All right, you have seen the reveal. I hope you enjoyed it. I love this dress. I wore it to work today. I'm feeling pretty good about it. But before we jump into my final thoughts, we are first going to do the cost breakdown like usual. All right, so the fabric was actually the cheapest part of this project, coming in at $3.25. Spooky, come up here and be a menace if you're gonna do that. Actually, technically I spent even less than that because I have one yard left over out of four, so. I did pretty well. This is just because I was able to buy that at the sale near me where they sell by the pound. My notions here were more expensive because of all the buttons. I used 18 buttons, so I like keep a running total of all the buttons I buy, and right now it's 79 cents a button. So that brings us to a grand total of $19.46. That also includes threads, interfacing, and binding tape. So got a whole lot going on there. And then the pattern was $17.20. So that brings me to a grand total for this dress of $39.91. I was perusing ye old fash fashion websites and actually I'm pretty happy with this price. It has more detail and is way better made and I really like the fabric. This was definitely really, really worth my while. Um, one of my goals over the next year is to make 50% of my projects under $50 just as a challenge to me and because I know oh, economic times are tough and there are more accessible ways to sew and I want to demonstrate that by you know walking the walk instead of talking the talk this fits within that goal and yeah this this does put this about as cheap as fast fashion which is pretty neat however of course when we talk about fashion we are not just talking about supply cost we are also talking about labor fast fashion one of the big issues is their use of unethical labor including forced labor and child labor to just kind of discuss cost of labor I uh, take my time I track it and then I multiply it by the living wage here in Seattle. Of course, me sewing a dress like this is not a one-to-one. -one. Factories are much more efficient. However, I just think it like should demonstrate time and like time is valuable. I mean, another thing about, sure, I only paid $40 for this dress. However, I spent 11 hours and 45 minutes of my time. Time is money here in America. You sell essentially your time and your labor. It is always important to think about like the time aspect of sewing. So I am taking that 11 hours and 45 minutes and multiplying it by 3270 which is the living wage here in Seattle I'm actually gonna adjust that for inflation starting next year but that puts us with a labor total of three hundred and eighty four dollars and twenty three cents which means for me to sell this and make money off my labor with no profit or any sort of other overhead cost I would have to sell it for four hundred and twenty four dollars and fourteen cents well you can definitely find designer gowns that have similar levels of details for this price
price. It's pretty hard to get people to pay the price of their clothes. I think at some point it would also be fun to show you like an ad of like a dress that I make that looks similar. I have lots of ideas for next year. I shouldn't go on too much about this, but I have, I have a lot of ideas floating around up here that I think would be fun to continue to contextualize labor costs and why labor is important and why advocating for workers rights is important for everybody. Garment workers get a living wage. That makes more of us get a living wage too, right? Because the more people make a living wage, the more people will go and work those jobs. And so the more other jobs also have to uplift living wage because I'm a firm believer when you're of working class, the tide rises all boats. I mean, I'm kind of a believer for that in life in general. I don't super believe in competition, but yeah, the tide rises all boats. And so if we start paying different portions of our population, significant living wages, other jobs are going to have to adjust or lose workers, right? But anyway, that is enough for my little rant for the day. Now we get to talk about the dress itself. Are you still up here, Spooky? Oh, you silly goose. Hopefully you can see her. She's just sneaking around. Oh, I don't really want you in my lap. Okay. She says, you may not want me, but I will be there. All right, kid. So here is the dress. Whoop de doop. I wore it to work today and I really like it. It is a very understated dress for me, but it still makes me feel really, really like feminine, which is what I look for in clothing. This is a bit different because this is a dress that makes me feel like a little bit more femme fatale, which is not my usual vibe. Of course, with work, I wore it with something under it so it wasn't cut as low as it was in the reveal that is too bold for work for me however i wore it i enjoyed it i felt like swishy all day and while you could argue the arms are actually technically fit too loose for my sensory issues they're fit just fine this is a first like short sleeve thing i've worn in a really long time that i like feel really comfortable in and i don't get really overwhelmed from the feeling of something touching my arms so that is a good plus this project i will say was such a trust the process when i had just the front panels of these bodice done with the ruching i was like oh this looks horrible this whole look is gonna be horrible i'm gonna have to have a failed project which i feel like i haven't had in a long time but i continued sewing i continued working on it and it did indeed work and look really lovely. So sometimes when you're sewing, you're getting something that looks really ugly and you just need to trust the process and keep going. I will say I needed probably one more inch in the waist here. This was a little tight. It was fine for working through the workday and eating a normal lunch, but I wouldn't want to feast in it. It would definitely be a little tight for feasting. The other thing I'm sure you noticed in the reveal, there's like a curve to the buttons here, like significant curvage. So I'm going to cut off these buttons and re-sew them over a little bit so it all is a straight line. Technically I sewed them all in the same spot so I think this is just because there's more tension up here and less down here because I will say while I graded this pattern well for the waist I kind of forgot that I am technically more busty than probably this pattern expected and I think that's why you get the combo of such a deep V and I feel like when you look at the pattern cover the V like stays together and on me it doesn't because I have a bust <laughs> so it is definitely a little bustier than planned. As a result if I I make this again I will either add more room in the bust or I will add buttons further up I just I really liked that like neckline detail in this dress so I wanted to give it the full try happy with length there is a chance I have enough seam allowance in here to get me an extra I could probably get an extra half inch of movement which actually might make a difference in the waist here so I might give that a go to eventually but we'll kind of see I'm going into my weight downturn because in summer I'm a lot more active and I eat a lot and I'm just a lot less depressed <laughs> so I actually tend to have my bigger fluctuation in summer and fluctuate a little bit smaller in the winter so we'll just see how we end I know that's very opposite to what everybody else does but in the winter I'm just sad and I mop about my house and I cook lots of vegetables soup. That is why I feel like I fluctuate that way as I think when a lot of people like get stressed they eat more and when I get stressed and sad I like eat less which is not good. It's something I constantly work on. It is why I feel like I fluctuate opposite in the winter. So I'll kind of see where I am around January and then decide if I want to go through the effort of letting this piece out. I think that kind of wraps this up. I'm, I'm just I'm so happy with this. It turned out well. It was a challenge because of all the different upsizing I had to do. So I think it's pretty 
pretty cool it turned out the way it did that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed it as always you can support me by buying me a coffee over on ko-fi i always really appreciate when you do i put a lot of time and money into this channel and each video makes maybe 50 dollars so it always helps and then of course if you can't support me financially there are always lots of free ways to support me such as liking this video commenting down below and sharing with a friend it always helps to reach more subscribers and usually you have friends that have some things in common with you i guess that's kind of what friends are huh and of course subscribe and stick around i do a sewing video every other week and then every other week is whatever nonsense i feel like doing right now we're in the thick of some travel vlogs from argentina and uruguay so i will see you next week with one of those travel videos and then we will have my final project of the year after that so i will see you then bye